Good morning from the CNET New York studios. It's episode 238 of the 359 podcast. And in the house today, we've got Alfred Eng and Ben Fox Rubin. And today we are talking about... The Xbox One X. You Xbox One X, Xbox One X, Xbox One X. <laughs> Xbox. If, if you say it enough times in a dark room in the bathroom... Candyman the- shows up. <laughs> I and I am staking with Xbox. Xbox. I'm I'm dubbing it here. Bonks. And I want everybody out there to hang on to that. It's the Xbox. Xbox. There's a lot to talk about with it. You can't spell you Xbox so. One X without Triple X starring Vin Diesel. Right. So w- get out with with E3. <laughs> it's going to be pretty gamer heavy today. We'll talk about the Xbox One X. That's the big thing that came out of E3. We'll also talk about some mini consoles that are coming out from Atari and Sega. We'll also throw in something on the iPad Pro. Yeah, the reviews are in. We got our hands on it. And, um, you know, I'm we'll, going to be sharing my thoughts on it. But We'll talk about it. Yep. Let's uh, let's make this let's, podcast happen. Let's podcast. Oh, right. Send in your questions and comments. Of course, Brian will get to as many as he can at the end of the show. And now let's podcast. All right. Here we go. In three, two... Welcome to the 359. I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. At E3 on Sunday, Microsoft unveiled the Xbox One X, where they're calling it their most powerful console yet. Its uh, biggest update is a big you know, graphics boost and speed jump, and it'll be available on November 7th for $499. It was originally named as Project Scorpio, and they're also saying it's going to be the smallest Xbox ever. Now, Ben, they've got 4K and VR support um, as part of it, but so far there's been no games for that yet. So does any of this actually even matter? Oh, come on. I it matters. <laughs> Well, look, you can't say we can do all these things and then, like, not have anything to show for it. Okay, you are right on the VR front. Mm -hmm. I actually read in our story today that not only is VR not available out of the gate for this, but it might not even be available in 2018 either. It's just, what's the point? Like, you could have waited for that. I mean, like, they're still fresh off the Xbox One S. Right. And then and then it's just like, oh, uh, we, we've got all these cool new things for it, but it's also not available yet. Okay, you are going to get a graphics boost from yes. this. Even if you don't have a 4K TV, mm-hmm. it is going to provide better graphics for your current games. No, there aren't going to be exclusive games for the Xbox One X, at least for now. But uh, you're going to get better graphics, and you're also going to get faster speeds, faster load times. It so. Just- it just seemed impatient. Like, uh, like they could have clearly done all of these things for the Xbox One S and then, like, waited a little bit longer for that's the true. One X. The, the, um, the S also only came out, what was it, last year? Yeah, it, that's my point. They Like, mm-hmm. they could have waited, like, a little bit for that and then just... Because people were still using the Xbox One pretty heavily by the time they came out with the One S. Yeah. It just seemed, like, very rushed. I don't know, like, if you get this feeling from, like, this all this like news no I, I i think foundationally it seems like a really impressive machine where you are going to get a lot of really impressive stuff mm-hmm. that maybe a year or two from now is going to make a lot more sense mm-hmm. and uh some of the stuff about it sounds really really cool so i am personally interested and excited that it's out there but i, I don't disagree with some of your your knocks about it you know it's already all available on the playstation 4 just saying Okay, okay. <laughs> um, next up, the reviews are in for the latest iPad Pro. Our writer, Scott Stein, got his hands on it and said it improves on drawing and editing capabilities that the uh, iPad Pro already had. But uh, its true potentials would be revealed in once iOS 11 comes out. Right. That just, it just seems like if you're in the market for a new iPad, you really should just wait until September. Yeah, of course. But that being said, like this is supposed to get us one step closer to... Uh, complete mm-hmm. laptop replacement. Yep. It gets that a little bit more. At least that's according to Scott's but that's, review. But that's that's coming with iOS 11 with you know the Files Explorer and things like that, right? Right. It, oh, yeah. totally. So, so if you want to wait until September, yeah. sure. But it's going to be the same mm-hmm. price regardless. Mm-hmm. So if you want to buy it sooner than that and start to mess around with yeah. it in the you know with iOS 10, I, it, mm-hmm. to me that doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with that. But, it's not like it's going to be a bad experience for you but do you see people like actually starting to legitimately replace their laptops with like a tablet hybrid kind of thing like the ipad pro is in general um from what we've seen i think it's mostly been the surface Mm -hmm. not as much with the ipad Mm -hmm. but maybe this helps apple get a little bit closer to that and uh next up you know i don't know if you've heard about this small company called nintendo but um you know around last year (laughs) they were very successful with the nes classic um, and now Sega and Atari, two video gaming giants, 
are hoping to do the same with the Genesis and the um, Atari, I, I don't what is the it, like Pong. the Pong machine? Yeah, the Pong machine. Okay. You uh, know people are going to buy that thing. I, I don't know because these games are not for my generation. So I, I'm wondering what like your thoughts are on this because I, I, mean, I did like, not grow up with any of these games. Obviously, the Sega Genesis flashback, that's what they're calling it. It's going to be this mini console is um, definitely working on the nostalgia mm -hmm. of, you know, the same thing with the NES Classic. Mm -hmm. So my expectation is, is that people would want to buy that. They like Sonic. They like Mortal Kombat. That, that to me, seems like a good opportunity. Well, uh, that's all the time that we had for today's podcast. If you um, wa want to see more of that, check us out on CNET.com. Um, I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. Thanks for listening. All right, so we have a few uh, uh, alternative name suggestions going on in the chat. Xbox One X. Xbox One Sex. <laughs> That's the combination of uh, Xbox One S and Xbox One X. That is the peak creativity we have at this table as well. So, if I was uh, Brian thank Tong, you to Pop and Legend. If, if this was a Brian Tong show, I'd start singing Xbox One X, want to sex you up or something like that. Give X it time. I'm sure he's give working it time. on it. Yes, a we will do a music Xbox video. Xbox One SSX Tricky Volume 5. <laughs> Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. And this is this is the continuation of our referencing of Brian Tong on every podcast. Uh, isn't that in his contract? Yes. <laughs> when Brian Tong contract. is not on screen, the people... lesser <laughs> that lesser podcasts have to rest, need to a a reference ask, him. Where's Brian? <laughs> <laughs> so let's hear from everybody out there if you are super excited about the Xbox One X Xbox or not. Um, some people definitely are. Some people are like, it's just a $500 graphics boost. It's not doing much for me. Um, it's, I like Strider's World comment in general that E3 equals cringe fest. And I don't <laughs> this is very true. Yeah. Brady on the nose on that one. Um, I used to like really want to go to E3 when I was a kid. Like I'd watch like the coverage on tech TV, which turned into G4 eventually. And it mm -hmm. was just like, oh, I really want to go to that. And then it just got to a point where like now I see it for what it is. And I'm like, I, I don't want to be there. Yeah. Like, ever. <laughs> Very nerdy. Why? I mean, that's not to me, it why I don't want to go. It just it just seems like a whole bunch of nothing. Mm. I, I, I guess that's true. That being said, go to Penny I Arcade if is, you want to go to something cool. You know, it, I I still think the Xbox One X is. It seems to me to be a fairly big deal. Again, I don't think that we're really going to see the total benefits of it now or maybe even next year. But it really does um, help Microsoft get a little bit closer to what PlayStation has particularly with VR, mm -hmm. but it's not quite there yet. It's not fully baked, but I, I think it does provide the foundation for that. I mean, I just wish they made it more like PC gaming where it was it basically, like you could get games from like Steam on it and stuff like that. That mm -hmm. would like actually be something really cool for the Xbox One X. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox the, One X. You know X what? The initials Box. for Xbox One X spell out Xbox. It's such a meta like Whoa. console name. Holy moly. So I'm That's just, pretty awesome. They should have just called it like the Xbox Triple X or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we'll get there at some point. I, I do want to run down the prices on this. I, so yeah, go ahead. The Xbox One, which is like from 2013 now, two hundred and fifty dollars. You're gonna pay twice as much, four ninety nine for the Xbox One X. I think you can also get the Xbox One S, which came out last year, also for two fifty. If you want to go to the PS4, that's also roughly two fifty, two ninety nine, depending on whether it's on sale. And the PS4 Pro, which gets you 4K and also VR, is $400. Mm -hmm. So it's $100 less than this Xbox One X. And it's available now. And it has and exclusives. And you can play VR on it already. PlayStation 4 rules. There you go. There uh, you go. Get a oh, Nintendo man, Switch. You're piss off our Microsoft watchers. But I, I mean, okay, it is what it is. You're not wrong. Uh, Pop and Legend says it really should have been called Xbox One Elite or something like that. I I would really like to find Microsoft's naming department because how do they jump from Xbox to Xbox 360, then to One, then to One S, and then from S to X? I don't I don't understand it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. The Elite next, would have been cool. Mark my words. The next one's called the Xbox Box. Xbox <laughs> Box Box Box. Put it in the calendars now. <laughs> I mean, to I'm be calling like. It. They, yeah, I mean, like PlayStation 4, when they came out with their like souped up version, it was like PlayStation 4 Pro. Right. That makes it sense. Makes, it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's slightly higher <laughs> price point. PlayStation 4 X 12. I don't know. Isn't it like in tech circles, you add an X to the bottom, to, to the end of something? It's supposed that, to provide yeah. some sort of yeah. like elite in the 90s. Whatever. In yeah. the 90s. Okay. So they, do they add an extreme to it? <laughs> I'm getting tired of defending this thing. 
forget it. I'm giving up this <laughs> position. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, what are we really shooting for here? Uh, Tony Ayo says, I still have my original Xbox One. My name, uh, my name is Jeff. Uh, he says, I still have my Xbox 360. Jeff, me too. I'm a very casual gamer. Mm -hmm. I'm not that excited about this. I was kind of thinking like, oh, maybe it's finally time to update. I've skipped a generation. Let's go. Let's go down this uh, Primrose path. And uh, nope. No, thanks. Okay, fair enough. But I, feel I, I had an Xbox 360 for about a year. Yeah, I still have mine too. It's just the graphics are really not that good. I upgraded to the PlayStation 4 about a year ago. It was totally worth it for me, especially because the price kept dropping where I got it for like 250 It might be because I've never like played on like the current generation where like the graphics are like stunning. But like whenever I play on my Xbox 360, I'm like, this is fine. I'm okay with Meh, it. I, I really didn't feel that way. It wasn't as enjoyable or interesting to me. So that's why I like stopped playing as much with the 360. And to me, that's when it was worth it to upgrade to a new one. However, convincing people about 4K is another thing entirely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, are you really going to notice the graphic difference? You're probably going to need to get a new TV. Yeah, that and too. even when you do get a new TV, you've got to get like a giant one. So you're really going to see a lot of those differences. And or that's just been put on like the 4K glasses. Yeah. You could do that too. <laughs> but that's been the problem for TV manufacturers. That's been a problem for the hardware makers of really convincing people to like jump over to this whole 4K thing. I mean, like, HDR is another idea to get people to buy new hardware, but I don't know nearly as much about that. So I'm not going to talk too much on that. Is anybody actually excited for the Sega Genesis and Atari whatever like remake? Mm, did remake, they give them names yet or they're just I classic? Think it's the, I think it's the Sega Genesis flashback according to our story. I'm sorry to disparage yeah, our Atari Sega, fans. I'm, I'm, I'm looking just, at it right now. Sega <laughs> Genesis flashback. I think this is way cool. I've literally never played any like Atari consoles. I was super you were born early. Like eight years ago. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I did play Atari, and um, but but like for me, the nostalgia really kicks in with the Sega Genesis and the NES Classic. Frankly, Wait. I feel like the NES Classic was like that was the sweet spot. Like the Sonic the Hedgehog games, sure, I still those are play. Great. I'm still. I just re-downloaded Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog three the other day. Yeah, but. I, I still think that like it was a big mistake for Nintendo to just not just keep churning out those NES classics until well, Sega they just definitely completely fair. Their, Sega definitely is capitalizing on yeah. their mistake, being that they're going to let you plug cartridges in, right? Oh, 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 that would be sweet. Mm. Take is a that one, true? That's what I heard. You also have that's to what blow I heard it rumors. In. <laughs> yeah, like it, it comes no, not working. No, Sega didn't have it. It comes Sega, not working. <laughs> Sega didn't have as bad of a dust problem because they had a dust guard on the actual console as opposed to mm. Nintendo, which there had you that go. stupid drop drawer. Oh my God, I love that drop drawer. There was like they had to make it a game for kids to start their games. So I had I had a buddy. Chunk. There was there was in college somebody still had one of those old systems, and there was like such like this this beautiful like effort that he had to do to get it to work perfectly. <laughs> He blew on it for like three or four minutes and then had to put it right on the edge yep. for it to actually work. And, it, and you know, 50 percent of the time, even after like that entire process, like it still wouldn't work. But I guess that was part of the fun. Do you know do you know if the new Sega console will also support 4K? Yes, it absolutely <laughs> will. That's Sonic the Hedgehog you can, you can in 4K. Count the pixels. Yeah, <laughs> there's seven. <laughs> All uh, right, just jump back into the chat before we got to wrap it up for the day. Uh, Strider's World says, so many new iterations of existing generation consoles. Is new generation console more of a marketing campaign? Yeah. Yes. That's a lot of it is marketing. The Xbox One SX that's a, that's two a point thing. beta elite. That's the thing that's whatever. always bothered me where it's like it used to be like you would wait like 10 something years and then they'd come out with like this whole new one that like is like really different. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like every two years. It's like almost like you're getting a new phone, but with like a console, which is like very frustrating. Right. Like, and, lame, and those and changes are incremental. Job. What's that? Just a lame paint job. Yeah. I, I would argue that this one is uh, a more significant upgrade, but you're not going to really see the benefits of mm -hmm. it right now. But We're brick walling, just like Apple. I, I think I like I agree. I agree with the general sentiment. I don't think that we. That's not peaked. true. Have you seen the Nintendo Switch? All right, that's <laughs> so it's old. pretty cool. I mean, like, and that thing is selling like hotcakes. Yes, but at the same it time, it's a whole new. <laughs> oh no! Come on. <laughs> Either way, at the same time, Nintendo really did not focus on 
graphics, 4K, yeah, VR, but it's all to. that stuff. Yeah, no, it didn't need to my because whole point it's is, on like, If the game play. is good enough, then like the graphics like really shouldn't be like the deciding factor of whether or not it's a fun game. It's you're discussing we the were philosophical just, differences we between were, Nintendo and the We were just talking other guys. about how excited we were for like the Sega Genesis whatever that's where, true. like it like the obviously the graphics are not 4K on that. So like that's my point. They're fun games. They like last the test of time and mm-hmm. As long as the graphics are like decent enough, I don't think that like it really matters if it if you know Mar- you can count the hairs on Mario's mustache. <laughs> yeah, which right. I would like to do. Back back to Pop and Legend in the chat. Why can't console makers just focus on making games? I just want the games to be fun. Are we missing something in this generation? I think that's weird. Like, I mean, look at us. We're sitting here getting way more excited about the re- rebirth of a Sega Genesis exactly. and right. Atari and the Nokia and the classic game collections, which they don't have the best graphics. Obviously, they don't even perform all that well sometimes. But there's that nostalgia factor. We all have pleasant. Re- um, recollections and memories of experiences with these games maybe they're heavily biased they're probably heavily biased mm-hmm. but I mean, then they're, they're like look at all this under the hood and we're like all right cool. i mean like look at how crazy like popular like minecraft is which is not like a graphics driven game it's right. just like good gameplay yeah which i did see an article that was like oh like minecraft for the xbox one x is is gonna come in 4k they're like, why? Like, okay. What's the point of this? <laughs> so they can put 4K on a box. That's it. It's like, what's the like? It's Minecraft. All right. In the in the defense of graphics, I mean, like Uncharted Four is a beautiful game to play, and it, it's when the graphics are smooth and it's a lot of fun. I've also played like some PlayStation VR, not a lot. It's very immersive. It's very interesting. Yeah. So. I, I'm I'm happy that we've moved on from the Sega Genesis ultimately. Yes. But I appreciate what you guys are saying as far as those games, as far as gameplay, as far as nostalgia have mm. a ton of value and obviously a lot sure. of money to be made on them too. Oh, yeah. Uh we gotta talk at least once about uh the iPad. Strider's World says, Do you think Apple doesn't update the MacBook Air because the iPad Pro is being marketed as a laptop and therefore is the entry level laptop now? Great question. I mean, I think that makes yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially since like they didn't really talk that much about the MacBook Air that much. More so, it was like Pro or desktop client, and then the iPad, the iPad Pro. Yeah, but like I would argue, okay, so the MSRP on the iPad Pro, the new one, is six fifty. The MacBook Air is nine ninety nine. So I think that Apple probably still wants you to buy one of their MacBook Pros. Mm -hmm. Which uh, pros or is, airs? No, the pros. Okay. So the air is a thousand bucks. The pros, I think, start around um, twelve hundred or thirteen hundred, mm-hmm. something like that. So they probably would rather that you didn't buy a pro I mean, because you, mm-hmm. you're spending less money. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, though, like the biggest selling point for the MacBook Air was like how light it was, mm-hmm. and then if you got an iPad Pro, which is like definitely lighter than the than the MacBook Air is, it's just one of those things where it's you know. I, th- I I do think they're trying to phase out the MacBook Air. Oh, they've been trilling, trying to kill off the MacBook Air for a long time. However, it just keeps selling. Like it's just really very much a sweet spot for a lot of people as far as um, a laptop is concerned. Yeah. For whatever reason, Apple, along with a lot of these other tech companies like Nintendo, does not want to give its customers what they want. They want to tell co- their customers what they want, and I feel like this is another example of that. So hmm. I, I and and. If somebody were to ask me, you know, oh, I need a new laptop, like, should I get an iPad Pro or should I get a Surface or whatever? I personally would not switch over from a laptop. Like, to actually get actual work done, I still strongly believe in laptops. I think the Surface Pro is, like, a decent, like, laptop alternative, though. I can't speak that well. Probably more that Because it has, like, Windows 10 on it still. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do all of the things that that the iPad Pro is supposed to do with iOS 11. Right. Like, already on a Surface Pro. Yeah. So. All right. Before we wrap it up, uh, Tony Ayo is asking, where's Jeff Bacalar? He's actually at E3 right now. Yeah. Uh, he'll be there all week unveiling more and more coverage. I know Nintendo's tomorrow and we'll be rolling out clips from everything. So he's on the site there and uh, we'll make sure to have him. Yeah. We'll try to get him on when on he... the show when he gets back to do yeah. like a, a recap of his E3 experience. That far. would be great. And on that note, probably a good place to wrap it up for the day. Yep. Uh, if you liked what you heard, the 359 podcast is available on CNET.com iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, and of course, Google Play Music. Unbelievable. Thanks for listening. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow.